Welcome to a brilliant performance. Welcome to the another little tech bit that we're going to do. This one's going to be quite a short one. It's quite an easy one. Uh, this one is about Generation One or RSV Tuono, or sorry, RSV ninety eight to two thousand and three Tuono uh, 02 to 05. So these are the uh, two backlights, Generation One bikes that we're talking about with the EEPROM that you can remove. So we're talking about removing EEPROMs. Uh, and replacing EEPROMs correctly. Okay, so what we've got, why do we replace an EEPROM? We replace an EEPROM in the ECU of the bike to change the fueling and ignition tables. We do a modif we do modifications to our bikes. When we do these modifications to our bikes, um, what we aren't changing in the instance, in that instance, is any of the ignition or the fueling maps to compensate for this. So we supply EEPROMs, which are the parts that hold these fueling and ignition tables, to actually compensate for these changes. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to safely take the um, ECU out of the bike. It sounds quite straightforward but a lot of people can actually create damage and I'll show you why in this particular instance. So we'll sort that out, show you how to do that and, and I'll show you the difference between uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2. Um, uh, basically you can't change the uh, the prompt in Gen 2, they need to be programmed but I'll show you the difference. Right, so this is a Gen 2 ECU, these are the ones that are in the later bikes, uh, these are the ones that can't change the EEPROMs in, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you in this bike how to remove the EEPROM carefully and steadily, and then I'll show you how to change it, so bear with me a sec while we change the camera angle. Thank you very much, welcome back. It was the camera angle change, so Fran's holding the camera like this now going, gotta keep it steady, gotta keep it steady. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you why it's important to be careful when you take the ECU out of these bikes. So if you have a quick look down here, this is the location underneath the seat of a Gen 1, this is Bo's bike. Now the reason why it's, you've got to be a little bit careful about uh, doing this and why you've got to be a little bit careful about uh, removing these block connectors is because that some people hook their fingers around the wiring loom and yank on these block connectors. The problem is, is you can actually pull the block connectors out of the ECU and create problems. So the technique to this is to push down, there's a little tab, the little safety tab, to push down on the safety tab, push the screwdriver in and just lever it out, the block connector against the body of the ECU very, very carefully. Okay, so we're talking onto that like that, one out of the way and push the tab down and lever the block connector out of the way, screwdriver out of the way. Okay, pull the block connector out of the way. Then, rolling back slightly, panning away, roll the EC out the back. That's it. So what we've done is we've removed the EC out of the bike without pulling on the block connectors. It's a really, really common problem that we find that basically when these ECUs are pulled or when these block connectors on the bike are uh, yanked on, when people have changed, it, changed these EEPROMs, the, the little pins in the block connector get damaged. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to strip one of these and how to change it. But we're gonna go over there, so I'll be back in a few moments. Right then, now we've got over here, we're back by the ECU, we've got the ECU on the bench. What I'm gonna show you then, I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat. I'm gonna do a little bit of a blue piece. So I'm gonna do a bit of a, here's one we prepared earlier kind of thing. And I've got to put my glasses on because I'm getting old and I can't see anymore. So what we're gonna do is take these screws out to take the casing off. One, two, here's one we prepared earlier. Do you think I'd ever get a job on Blue Peter? Perhaps not. Not good looking enough. Okay, and then we're going to lift the lid off. We're going to lift the lid off out of the way. This would be the front section, that's where the block connectors were that we were talking about before. And if you have a look over here, this part here is the EEPROM. This part is the, the part that we're going to need to change. This is the EEPROM, this is the uh, chip that we use to actually uh, hold the fueling tables and to hold the uh, ignition tables. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a plastic sort of lever, or like I'd say a screwdriver if you've got a plastic sort of plastic bladed screwdriver, something along those lines, a spatula, something along those lines. And we're going to use the, uh, use the sort of the screwdriver just to lever to lever out gently the EEPROM off the base. Okay, so we'll just use that to, just to lever it out carefully. You might see that it needs it's a little bit of a little bit of levering out, and we're going to try and avoid touching the actual 
pins on the base of the EEPROM. Now this bit's quite important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the EEPROM over and I'm going to show you on the base of the EEPROM right here that this little notch here that we're looking at here when we're refitting the new EEPROM there's straight that side there's a notch this side if you have a look on the base in the actual EEPROM as well itself the EEPROM base itself it has the notch which matches on the EEPROM so they've got to go the right way around if you don't put those the right way around basically the fuel pump won't prime as soon as you turn the ignition on the chip's gone it's dead Every problem we sell in this building is uh, checked and confirmed before it goes out, no questions. So if it doesn't work, it's because it's gone in the wrong way around. Like I said, just one more time and we'll do a bit of a close up on this. There's a notch in the EEPROM base and there's a notch in the actual EEPROM as well itself. If we can confirm that, when you fit this, so we'll fit this. Right then, spin this round. We're going to match like, I'm going to put the outside edge, or sorry, the inside edge like that in first, which is why I need my glasses, because I can't see anything like that. So one side in first, then I'm going to, I may have to find, you may have to find, you may have to push, you may have to push on the legs slightly, because obviously that's how they hold them in, but I'm going to push it slightly and drop it in like that. That's it, so we've got the outside edges with the notch on matching the base and the EEPROM. Put the outside edge, or put one edge in first, and then you may have to push it in slightly, just bend the leg slightly and drop it in. That's how it works. Once it's in, make sure it pushes in clearly, make sure you know what's going on that way so you know that's safe. Then a lot of the instructions come with these trim screws. These trim screws here, then should be set at 12 and 6 o'clock. We might as well fit them at 12 and 6 o'clock. A brief explanation about what they are. These are the CO trim screws. These are just the fueling plus minus 10% from tick over to about approximately 4,500 RPM. This is where we've seen the effect. So if we set these at 12, 6 o'clock, we know we're kind of somewhere in the ballpark. The situation is that once you've actually fitted your EEPROM, to make the most of it, we need to actually set the CO levels. If you have a look on the downpipes on your exhaust, four to six inches away from the, uh, away from the exhaust manifold, you have a five mil Allen screw, uh, five mil Allen key screw. If you take those out, they need to have, or we need to plug the CO meter into those, uh, into those holes with the adapters, and we then need to balance the throttle bodies and set the CO levels correctly. So these, and this here is how we would do this. So we would adjust the new mapping that is on your EEPROM using these to make sure the CO levels are balanced correctly. If you can do that, uh, then basically that's compensating for any of the changes that you make with your, uh, with your bike. There's different levels of EEPROMs that you can get hold of dependent on the type of engine you've got. Obviously, if we're talking RSV Gen 1, 98 to 2000 is a small valve engine, so there would be a slightly different mapping required than it would be if you had the 01 to 03. So, different EEPROMs to suit different applications with different tunings. Get in touch if you're not sure. Send us a message on the Facebook page. You can email us at service at aprilliaperformance.co.uk. You can give us a call at the shop, it's not a problem. Give us a ring on the phone, no dramas or you can get in touch with us any place, not a problem. Uh, if you want to do that, no dramas, we can explain to you how to go, how to go about that, which one to get, uh, to get hold of, uh, for the kind of tune that you've got on your bike. No problems. Let us know how you get on. If you know of anything that you want us to cover on these particular films, if you know of anything that you want us to, to mention, to, to, to explain to you, um, get in touch, let us know how you get on. Don't forget to subscribe, take care, and we'll talk to you soon.